Hello there. This is the part where I start talking, but if you're willing to stay, I've got some real nuggets of information to share with you guys that I think you're going to love. But first, I'd like to thank our sponsor. Thank you. That's right, you are the sponsor. I really want to thank everyone who has bought the patterns and the schematics for this power hammer. You've really supported me in developing it further and making future things like this happen. And you'll be interested to see what other projects that your contribution has led towards. So like before, the upgrade package for this will be in the description. I'm developing it right now, so if it's not there yet, just leave me a comment and I'll be sure to work on it as quickly as I can. So your first question, without doubt, is going to be what on earth happened to the cylinder in the beginning of the video? Well, I did a post-mortem and I've left that for the last part of the video because it's slightly boring and I just want to get into the nook and crannies of it and probably so do you. Uh, but if you're the hardcore amongst you, you want to see all the ins and outs of what I think exactly went wrong with the cylinder, then that's for you at the end. In the meantime, let's talk about what I've actually done on the power hammer just now. So beginning with the new top linkage, what that is, is a floating joint is what I'm calling it, where the cylinder isn't directly linked to the head anymore. Instead, it's got this rubber cushion that it's sandwiched between. And what that does is it allows the little bits of flexibility, a little bit of movement, and take away a huge amount of the shock away from the cylinder. So before we had it directly linked, which worked, but it means that any misalignment of the fabrication means that any flexing or movement will then incur on the seals and the rod of the cylinder. So having the new top linkage takes away that, but it's semi-rigid. So it's not too loose that the hammerhead is then able to move too freely about. It's got semi-rigidity. So it still keeps everything nice and straight, but where push comes to shove and there's some real forces involved, it's able to move instead of the cylinder rod. So after that, you then saw me put in the new valve setup the proximity sensor and the brain box. And I've also connected the treadle to the ball valve, which I was using as a safety on off. I've now changed that to be the control of the power hammer. So let's focus on the valve. Now the reason why it has two solenoids, and the solenoids are basically electromagnets that basically adjust the valve position. Um, there, you can get singular ones. The reason why I chose a double one is because there's a neutral zone within that valve, meaning when it's turned off and there's neither side has been activated, the hammerhead remains quite rigid. That bounce is actually air inside the pipes. That's because it's not connected. And also, if I press on the treadle, which I am now, it's not doing anything. So it's kept it relatively safe for now. So if I just turn on the power, 12 volts in, that's turned on the solenoids now, and now I'm able to use it. Like that. As soon as I turn off the power, that treadle is now safe, and I can't move the head anymore. So the bit that actually controls this thing is called an Arduino. Let's have a closer look at that, shall we? So this here is the Arduino, which is an Arduino Nano. Oh, actually it's a clone, which means it's kind of like a copy. Arduino being the main company that I think is based in Mexico. So all I've done is written a very basic program using something called if statements. So if the sensor senses the hammer, it will operate one or two of the solenoids and send the hammer the opposite way. And then if it's not sensing, if it's not sensing in that code and in that line of code, then it will send the hammer the other way. Now this is something not to be afraid of. You guys could actually get one of these very, very cheaply and without even knowing how to program or how to code, you can literally just copy and paste code into it and it will do exactly whatever it's been programmed to do. 
but it's essentially like learning a language. You can get by by just using a phrase book and a few key sentences for the things that you want to do. But if you want to go off piece, then you need to learn the language a bit more in depth. But the code that I've written unique to this uh, will be available within that download package. And I'm also considering trying to develop this box, this whole unit as a device that you guys can have. So you could link it to any kind of homemade power hammer that you like and you've got the mechanism right here to make it happen. But there are many ways of making a power hammer reciprocate. You can use other types of pneumatic valves or you can use something called a steam linkage. And there are two channels of some guys who I think have done an amazing job using my power hammer kind of style design um, in the links in the description. Check out their channels, you'll be amazed at what you've seen. But what I like about what I've done is that it is condensed, it is small, it's compact, it's simple. But not only that, the components are really cheap and I can get absolute micro fine adjustment. Um, and I'm actually going to plug my laptop in now and just make some little tweaks and I'll show you what it can do. Just bear with. Okay, so this feels very kind of Mission Impossible or that I've got some sort of high performance Aldi car that I'm programming to optimize its performance and in a way it kind of is. So what I'm going to change here is as the head comes down it engages with the sensor. Within, when, as soon as it's engaged there's normally a delay of time where it's pushing the cylinder head down before it returns back up. The moment it returns back up and disengages with the sensor it then repeats that process again. And the sensor is strategically placed so that its momentum doesn't carry on up and overextend the cylinder. But just so we can see the comparison, this is how it's operating currently. We turn it on. Now, you may argue that that works pretty well. And as you saw me forge that poker, it, it did pretty well. What I did notice, though, is as the pressure begins to drop in the compressor uh, because you're using all the available air and then the compressor kicks in to refill up the tank and bring that air pressure back up again that there is not enough pressure at full whack to just complete some of the final laps of forging. So if I, it's currently got a 50 millisecond delay. If I change that now to 100 milliseconds there we go, hear that clicking? Listen to the difference now. Well, I hope you heard the difference, but uh, what I'm feeling there is a lot more time of impact before the cylinder goes back up. And it's little tweaks like that that make a massive difference. It'll also give me the ability to improve performance and add some sort of automation into this. So you could have a magazine, if you like, of flat pieces of pre-cut metal and a pusher that pushes a disc in at a time. It does a certain amount of hammer blows and then air pressure can psh, chuck the piece out ready for the next one. Stuff like that to be able to do in a garage like this would be awesome. So that's why I've moved on to Arduino rather than other types of linkages. But I can also improve performance. Like I said, I can time, but I can also count the amount of blows that I've done. And per job, I could tally all of those up and, and compare that with previous forging and all, all that kind of stuff. I can get some data and some analytics on what I'm doing which is awesome. The thing that I do like about a pneumatic power hammer though is right now it's on but there's no motor whirring, there's no other noise, there's no other, anything else using up energy. It's only using exactly what is stored which is what makes this very very efficient I think. And just in case you didn't hear the difference in those power hammers I'm going to change it to one second delay. Right listen to this now.
Isn't that cool? So something I might not have mentioned is that with the power supply and that specific valve system I've got, I can have an emergency off switch. So hit that, kills power, that cylinder locks in place and won't move anywhere, which is good. So I think it's worth mentioning that with the top linkage design, your one is gonna look slightly different. So I'd like to widen this top plate here so that you've got more room for thread in, in, in the steel. Um, I just, I don't like the threads being so close to the outside, especially on this side. And also your top um, plate here uh, will be slightly smaller. It doesn't need to be that big, but that was just a piece of scrap that I had and it just seemed to suit the job just nicely without me needing to do any work. So that's why mine looks like this and yours will look nicer. So what I will do is actually design this to be a bit better. It's not going to be held on using cable ties for example, it's going to be a proper built-in system. This works absolutely fantastic and I'm glad I'm able to utilize the foot treadle that we built in the last video. Let me just show you that it all looks the same. So there you go, same as it was before, except now we've linked it to the valve at the top there. So I hope you had a great Christmas. I actually got myself a 3D printer and I started printing off things like this, little electronics boxes, which made me think I can actually supply you guys with STL files to print your own electronics box, but with specific slots and configurations so the components fit in exactly without needing of any special screws or supports. But the best thing about that is even if you don't have a 3D printer, with a quick Google you can find local 3D printing services close by. Things like Materialize or the website Shapeways can print you all kinds of stuff in whatever materials you can imagine, really. Or if you've got one yourself, you can just print one off yourself. And everything will fit in there properly and not have to be hot glued in, which is what I did with that one. The next awesome thing that I think you should know, and that is that these push fittings are awesome, especially this particular type that has the o-ring seal on the back there. See that closely? These are brilliant. I currently can't find them on Amazon, so I haven't been able to put any affiliate links out there. Uh, but I bought these from a local company and are very expensive. Um, which is another reason why I don't have the quick exhaust valves anymore. And actually testing it without the quick exhaust valves, I think it still works absolutely fine. It, it might work marginally better with the quick exhaust valves because you're, ex you're exhausting all of that air pressure within the cylinder at the source so it makes it reciprocate more effectively. But because these are so expensive uh, I'd need more of them so I decided to just lose these. These, one of those is the same price as one of those. The other reason is the fittings that I was using before if you see, are tapered fittings, meaning as you wind it in, it kind of expands into the joint, making a better seal. Um, the problem is if you're using, like I did, stainless steel within aluminium and you over tighten it, you'll crack the aluminium and that isn't good. So using these means that I don't actually need to tighten them very much at all. It just needs to seal and then that's it. No over tightening and no risk of any leaks and being push fit means that I can make any adjustments and modifications a lot more easily. Also, as someone is probably about to point out, I should still oil the cylinder and protect the seals within it. And that's okay because I now oil it like a regular compressor tool. I simply pull out a pipe, it might be pre-pressurized, there we go, take it off, as simple as that. Get my special compressor oil, put in a few drops, and stick it back in. There you go, I've oiled it and it's fine. These though, they don't need oiling, and I like that. Nice grease-proof clean area. Right, last bits of information before I show you my secret project. The rubber couplings, if you like. I don't know what to call them yet. 
I'm going to call it a rubber coupling cushion, if you like. Uh, those will also be available on my Etsy shop as I cut more of them. But uh, what I also need to explain is that the previous um, cylinder cushions that I was making for you guys, I'd like to stop making those if I could. Um, because I believe this new system means that you don't need it anymore. So because of where the sensor is placed, the head of the hammer never gets to full extension. Instead, it switches, creating a pocket of trapped air at the very top. Um, that increases with pressure as the hammerhead goes up, acting like a spring, sending the hammerhead back down the other way. It means that your cylinder is now fully protected. So, so I am sorry for all these constant changes. I'm hoping that this is the very last change to be made. But as I've said in all of my emails to anyone who's purchased the patterns, I am right here at your disposal. If you have any problems or any issues, I can help you with those. As I've built my own, I can certainly help you with you building yours. So what am I actually gonna use this power hammer for? Well, I'm going to make axes and other possibly sharp devices. I don't really wanna make knives, and if I'm honest, I feel that there is, I'm jumping onto the bandwagon as far as axes goes, because it seems that everyone's making axes and knives these days, and I never thought that I would be that kind of a person, but because people keep asking me for stuff, I will make them. But I ask myself, what can I possibly m make an axe that is so different to everyone else's? I can put some artistic flair into it and maybe put in a little bit more engineering. Anyway, I've got some ideas. If you would like to see those, then let me know in the comments. Right, here's some bonus footage then. And it's not that you've suddenly realised how messy I am. It's my other Christmas present! Oh. This is a bottle jack. And it was used for lifting planes, weighing a lot. I don't actually know how much this will lift, but I'm certain it's above 50 tonnes. And it made me research a few things on the internet, and that is an air over hydraulic system, which is essentially meaning that I attach a small cylinder to the pump of this bottle jack, and if I make that cylinder reciprocate in a similar way that I did with the power hammer, then essentially this then becomes a powered hard hydraulic jack using my air compressor. But obviously that cylinder can move incredibly faster and it more force than I can by hand. So could I turn this into a forging press? Maybe. I mean, to be honest, I've seen lots of people have a go at trying it with one of these, which is your common 20 tonner, and them use it for all kinds of things. They still seem to work a little bit slow how they were doing it, so I thought I'd put my brain to it and see if I can make it work better. But who knows, this is an experimentation. And as always, if you want to see this, leave me a comment and let me know. If you're not interested, I'm, I'm not wasting my bother putting in loads of effort into making it work. Unless I need it, and then I'll make it work. So I'm going to quickly run through some frequently asked questions now and then I'll, we'll move on to something that I think you'll find more interesting. The cylinder being inverted as it is compared to other power hammers like Big Blue, I believe works better. The reason being is that it's mass times acceleration that gives you the impact force, not the pressure of the bore of the cylinder itself. So the whole area of the bore of the cylinder is important for sending the hammer head up to lift all of that weight. 
but then you want to send the hammerhead down as quickly as possible. Well, you've got gravity to help you with that and having it on the rod side, which means that there's less volume of space to fill with air, then it's gonna send it a lot quicker. Some may disagree with me on that, but because physics, it, it works. Second question, do I need all the upgrades to make it work? No, you don't. You can get away with just the first um, original design, but all of the improvements that I've built on, they are in the upgrades, which is why you would want the upgrades if you would like them. If you have purchased or you're about to purchase and you're saying you can't open the files, the DXF files are for CAD software only. They are for you to send to your local laser cutting company to have all of these bits cut out for you. So even though you're not able to open them yourselves, just set it to save and then you can send all of that information to whoever is nearby. You might even be able to find a friend with CAD CAM on a plasma table and that would work just as well. And lastly, am I going to be manufacturing these for sale anytime soon? Well, it really does pain me to say, but other people have already started manufacturing my power hammers without my permission. And as much as I've said stop it to those people, they've continued anyway. Now, I own 100% of the copyright to this hammer and I have all of the proof needed for it. You don't need a registration number to claim copyright, you just need to prove it and anyone who's created anything retains copyright of that thing. If I'm getting these manufactured, it's gonna to be to my standards and British standards, which is an internationally recognized standard of manufacturing. So the ones that I will be manufacturing will be different to this one. I've got an idea on how I would improve this further but I'm also going to go through a subscription based copyright protection so that I don't have to fight loads of court battles over it I've got I can just basically I'm protected there and they'll do all the fighting for me but uh, bury that deep inside and never let it surface again okay I'm happy again right so I hope you like that now let me show you the post-mortem of the cylinder Okay, so as you saw, the rod just pulled cleanly out and in close inspection there doesn't seem to be any damage at all to the rod. The rod's in pretty good nick. But uh, if I just take this apart, we'll have a look inside. Okay, so this is the top part of the cylinder that the rod protrudes through. And the seals and everything look pretty good this side. However, if I turn it over you can see there's some damage here where the aluminium has chipped away exposing this seal underneath and all of this kind of grey stuff here I think that is micro fragments off the rubber cushion just mixing with the oil let's have a look at the look at the uh, the rubber cushion Well, there's that piece. That's where it's been putting itself. Now the rubber cushion itself, you can see the pressure and wear over time has degraded slightly. That's how it what is now. That's how it used to be. So we can see the difference, but not too bad. It's been doing its job as far as I'm concerned. Right, so let's have a look inside. Mm hmm. I think I see where the problem goes. So, this is the plunger which was obviously used to be attached on the end of the rod here, uh, that way, like so. 
and then this bolt that was inside held it captive like so now what's happened is is that bolt has actually come loose and come off as you can see those dents on the top there it's obviously been smacking itself against that bolt whilst it's on the inside so all kinds of destruction has been happening just from this coming off now it doesn't look like anything's actually broken as such regarding this regarding the bolt the bolt just looks like it's you see there's no damage to that bolt it just simply came loose i think from all the vibration so i think having that floating joint will absorb some of that shock and certainly replacing the rubber cushion with a uh, air cushion will also help better as well now there's another problem that i found with this and that is the aluminium has cracked just along there where the where the threaded parts are so i did notice that a bit was leaking out in the event of it breaking apart but that crack across there I think is a combination of something else I think that these fittings as you can see are tapered and as you wind pressure in it, it kind of forces and expands into the joint now the, the dangerous thing is, is if you over tighten these you'll break the aluminium because this is stainless steel um, and I think along with all the shock these want to come loose and tighten as they get pounded through the hammer and that would have contributed to the cracking of that aluminium casting as well as from uh, it beating itself up inside now these rubber particles I don't think cause too much of an issue especially if you're keeping the thing oiled but I don't like the fact that it has degraded somewhat for abuse so i'd be glad to get rid of these i think from the design into something better so truly thank you all for your kind comments and your support in this the next project that we're on now is the stag's head sculpture which i know i've promised for a long time but i've actually got all the pieces cut ready and waiting i'm also doing another horse head video at the same time uh, to give more details on how to do the ears and other little bits. So again, anything specific that you want me to detail, let me know in the comments and I will include that into that video. And if you've really loved the power hammer making video, I've still got the steam engine design coming as well. That will generate power to go off grid with. Those components are all here as well, ready to be made. It's been a very busy year. I've not been able to do anything. But as we can see, things can change incredibly quickly. So I like to finish all of these videos with happy forging a life worth living and see you in the next episode. A few people have been appeared to be offended by that statement, but basically it's, it's meant to be a word of encouragement. I'm saying go and be happy and forge a life worth living, make a life worth living for yourself because the truth is it is a hard life and as much as we here on the internet make things look glamorous behind the scenes it's just as messy as everything else my background was incredibly difficult through the grace of god and hard work i've been able to get this far and in a nutshell if i can improve on that statement of forge a life worth living it means if you're feeling useless, then learn something useful. You have it within yourself to do that. No one can do it for you. And on that note, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.